Hello everyone, this is Gleb Vahmadov and today's video is going to be pretty special. Imagine I have a simple test. I'm visiting the site and I'm adding a couple of to-do items using this little utility function add item. And then I'm checking that there are two to-dos showing in the application. Okay, that's uh, so simple, right? It should work all the time. Let's look at the application. The test is already running right here. Notice it passed. Unfortunately, it only passes if we remove all the items before we run the test again. If we don't remove the items, well, the previous items remain and we have four items and the test fails. If we try to run the test again, now we have six items and it fails. So what do we do? How do we clean up the data before the test? The best recommended way is to use API or access the database and clean the table there. But sometimes it's unavailable and you have to use the user interface to if there are items, find all the destroy buttons and click on them. Let's look back at our test and how we could do it. Well, the first thing we have to do, we have to make sure that the application has finished waiting, right? Because we might not find any to do's and then we assume that we can add two more items, but that's when application actually finishes loading and shows like previous five to do's and so on. So this is where we will have to get the items and they might not exist yet. And this is where we will disable the built-in existence assertion. So site get by default tries to wait for items to be there and we say, okay, they might not be there. Just give me what you have. And so now we get the jQuery down with zero or several items. And if we look at those to-dos, this is now where we have to write ourselves if else condition. Well, if there are no to-dos, we're done. We just return from this then callback. But if there are to-dos, what do we do? We wrap them because it's a jQuery object and we want to run Cypress commands like find. We'll find all the destroy elements and then we'll click on them. And because they only become visible in hover, we'll say force true. And because there might be multiple to-dos, we'll say, yeah, click on multiple items. Okay, so this is how it works. If we don't find any to do's, then we are done, right? We can even uh, maybe print a message, nothing to clean up. But if there are items, right, it found two to do's, it found the destroy buttons and clicked on them and we see application deleting each one. And we want to confirm that there are no to do's after we finished this. Should have length zero is a good condition, okay? So this is how it works when we have two items. If we have no items and we run it, then it just says nothing to clean up and so on. Now, to me, that doesn't look too bad. It's a conditional, but it's inside that then all we have to remember is that we have to disable the built-in assertion that the elements should exist that Cypress has inside the querying commands. Unfortunately, other people disagree. And sometimes I'm getting very angry comments on my videos like this person does. Like, seriously, this code should be about four or five lines long, but you never find it. And Cypress you know, documentation is horrible, right? Now, I understand you're upset. You don't know how to do something. It's very frustrating. So how about in this video, I'll show how to do if else condition logic in Cypress, not using four or five lines of code but using one command like one line that's it that's all you have to do will this make you happy i think it will and honestly your code and your test should be deterministic but sometimes you're like okay i have this pop-up that sometimes comes in and i just need to close it that's it i don't want to even find out how to control it so i looked around and i wrote cypress if and it's easier to just see it in action so i'll go back to my vs code and I'll install, I'll install Cypress if as a dev dependency. And all I have to do in my support or even in a spec file that wants to use it is just import Cypress if. Okay, so first things first, even before we use Cypress if, we don't want to hard code wait. So instead we'll say, get me the app and it should have class loaded. Okay, so instead of hard coding, we just check a conditional class application says when it's done loading either zero items or several items. But now right here, okay, here's where we can change things. Okay, let's instead of to do items, just find all the destroy buttons right away. 
And if they exist, so this is the new command added by Cypress, if, if, okay. By default, it checks if it exists. You can say visible or like use any assertions that Cypress allows. So, uh, if you have a checkbox, you can say check, but by default, you know, if it exists, what do we do? Well, we want to click, right? And we need to click on potentially multiple items and they're invisible by default. So we'll just click on them and that's it. Let's see how it works. Okay. So notice it found them and clicked on them. And if we remove, then it does nothing. Well, it uses the default command timeout to keep checking if maybe that item will be found. So we can change that and we say we know the application has finished loading. So the item should be either there or not. Okay. So if we run it now, then it immediately checks it. You can write any kind of Cypress command chain right here. You can use dot within, you can use dot then and have multiple commands. Even better, you can add else branches, which is another command added by Cypress if. Okay, so if there are no destroy buttons, then we can say nothing to clean up. So we know what has happened. Okay, so right now we deleted things. Otherwise, it just says nothing to clean up. So if you have those pesky, you know, pop-up dialogues, maybe check buttons that you don't control, maybe you need to delete an item that's already there and you don't know how to control it, give Cypress if a chance. It might be what you need. You can find it, it's a public repo, NPM package, and there are a bunch of examples of using it in different situations. If you have any comments, concerns, problems, open an issue and I'll be happy to look into it.